CrossFitters are ready to handle anything, anytime, anywhere. And for those elite athletes who make it to the CrossFit Games, that means being ready for surprises. Like Monday night when they found out the 2012 CrossFit Games would begin two days earlier than expected. The first event is a swim bike run, a grueling test of fitness held 80 miles south of the Home Depot Center at the U.S. Marines Camp Pendleton, the Corps' largest West Coast training facility. The competition will start on the beach where athletes will battle a surf and swim an out and back course covering 700 meters as they make their way to the base's main beach. After a short run to the bike transition, they'll pedal their single speeds over a flat and easy half mile before turning off-road into the sand trail, where the bike is more likely to get a lift than the rider. It's a tough mile and change through shifting sand and rutted dirt before the athletes hit pavement for a three and a half mile sprint down the coast to the first checkpoint. Here, valuable points are awarded for a top finish, but next comes the real challenge. The athletes put the blue Pacific behind them as they take on the tricky terrain to the top of Microwave Mountain. Running along switchback after switchback, they'll climb over 1,400 vertical feet in the first two and a quarter miles. After the summit, a couple of down and ups are thrown in before they'll descend the remaining five miles over rock strewn trails into the flats and the final straightaway to the finish line in the valley below. All up, it's a total distance of just under 13 and a quarter miles, a true test for the fittest on earth, but just the first challenge in what will be a very eventful day one. This is it. The 2012 Reebok CrossFit Games are underway. You are looking at the beach in Camp Pendleton, the U.S. Marine Corps' largest West Coast base, where the athletes are taking on the swim, bike, run event, event number one on day one of the 2012 Reebok CrossFit Games. All the athletes are in one massive heat, so the men, the women, you'll see them all here. The men in the yellow caps, the females in the orange caps. It was a short run to the start of the swim. Some male athletes creating distance for themselves already. That's Numi Snake Hatter and Arson. He's an Icelander living in Sweden, so he's representing Europe. He spent seven years on the Icelandic national swim team, so he called his shot here. He wants to win the swim event. He's looking pretty so far, followed closely behind by Nate Schrader. This is way different than last year's beach event. It's rocky, the athletes were explicitly told, do not dive in. Last year they bombarded the waves. Here, they're taking their time, entering the waves gingerly. Some athletes even stopping at the waterline to put on their fins. There goes Numi, already creating distance with all but one athlete, looks to be Matt Chan, who was the winner of last year's swim portion of the beach event. Athletes off to an aggressive start. Remember, this is a very, very long event. In fact, the longest event in CrossFit Games history. You come out too hard from the gates and you're not ready for it, you could auger in. A beautiful aerial shot gives you perspective on the course there. The athletes are gonna go all the way up the orange buoys, keeping them to their right before they make their way back to the beach. Numi creating the gap between him and the other male competitors and Deb Cordner Carson, whose heart was broken by the beach event last year, is taking this one head first. But that's Brian Diaz from the South Central Regional. He was first place. He's on a jet ski, uncertain exactly what's going on here. His fate to be decided. Remember, if you ask for assistance, you can take a break, but these athletes are asked, do you want to continue on? And then they're forced to continue on. Not sure what Diaz's fate is going to be at this point. Snare, Katerin Arson continues to extend his lead as he, as he comes up on that final buoy. Another perspective of where these athletes have come from and where they're going. Extremely efficient in the water. Numi Snare, Katerin Arson is going to have this one in the bag. He's rounding that final buoy and heading for the home stretch to the beach. A short break there just to adjust the goggles, but again, he's on a charge. 700 meters closed it in a very admirable amount of time. These guys are wearing fins, makes that swim a little bit quicker. But look at that swim, much longer than it was last year. There again, the mixture of the female athletes, the male athletes. 
no scaling in this event. Everybody's doing the exact same thing. And already you see some of the females passing the male athletes. This young lady, Amy Sakamoto, off to an early lead. The OG from Santa Cruz is closing the gap, but as you can see, Numi just pulling away from that second place male, Matt Chan. Brian Diaz looks like he's gonna gear back up and get into the water, so not out of the competition just yet. Just had a scare. Confirmed, however, is that Orlando Trejo, the Peruvian representing Latin America, is officially out of the 2012 Reebok CrossFit Games. Not too surprising. You know, he's only seen the ocean about two times by his own account, so uh, something of this magnitude, not too surprising. But it is heartbreaking that really before his CrossFit Games began, they're already over. Here's Numi very comfortably negotiating the surf and the waves on the way back in. His athletes were briefed by Dave Castro on how to negotiate the surf, the rocks, and Numi does not look to be nervous here. He's created such a wide gap for himself that he can, uh, he can take his time and really make sure that he does this right. Beautiful shots here of the beach at Camp Pendleton. And you'll see that Numi's now gonna come up on the beach. He'll make his way to the transition point, prepare for the 800 or the 8K bike. Numi here will defin. And again, just looks looks at home in the water. Very, very comfortable. So, no question about it. Numi is by far your male leader at this point in the competition. He's followed closely behind, however, by Matt Chan. Chad McKay is just about in lockstep with Chan. There you see Matt Chan. Again, he finished the uh, swim portion of the beach event in first place last year and coming in second this year. Early on in the day, the, the marine layer had settled down. The administrators were concerned we might have to pull the plug on the event or push it back. But as you can see, the uh, clouds are lifting, the sun's shining through. It's going to be a beautiful day here at Camp Pendleton. There's Chan still hasn't defended. And Chad Mackey actually neck and neck gaining some ground on that transition. It'll be Mackey who will overtake Chan as they approach the transition point. Now, Chad Mackey and Matt Chan, both 200 plus pound athletes. Interesting to see that they're second and third out of the water. There she is. The first female out of the water is Annie Sakamoto, the 2011 Cro Spirit of the CrossFit Games award winner. She will be the first female in the competition at this point. Numi here, choosing to take his time. You just saw Chad McKay actually run past him. McKay looks to be a little bit more aggressive as this, this herd of athletes is now charging, storming the beach. And as you can see, a, a fine mixture of males and females now finished with the swim portion of the run. Now McKay chose to forego a long transition where Numi took his time. You see, actually McKay was second or third out of the water and here he's making up the ground. Looks like he's gonna be the first one to get his helmet on and get to his bike. CrossFit Games, truly international sport. We have an Australian and an Icelander in the lead. There is, there's Daniel Hershey coming out of the water at this point. So again, representing Asia, our sport has grown uh, in magnitude. Two leaders are on the flat portion of the bike. This won't last long. These are single speed bikes, and pretty soon here these guys are gonna run into rough terrain. Last year's champion, Rich Froning, and his training partner, Dan Bailey, now out of the water, looking composed. Rich lost a lot of ground on the beach event last year, but he's gonna try and make up for that. Julie Fouché, second out of the water, taking her time now on the transition. As Chad McKay continues to charge on this bike, looking comfortable. But here's that portion we're talking about where the bike is more likely to get carried than ridden upon. You're gonna see some, uh, some carnage there. Looks like Fouché lost ground to Ruth Anderson Harrell, the Kiwi. She's got some triathlon experience, so no surprise that she's going to do well so far in the event. There's Fouché coming out of the gates again. She was second out of the water and now she's entering the bike in third place. Remember, Fouché last year beat all but eight male athletes in this competition. Your two male leaders, leaders now charging along the dirt road, again, pushing their bikes, not riding them. 
as they enter this rough portion of the bike. New snake hair, Ketter Narsen still in the lead. There is Matt Chan though, however, coming in third place, hitting that sandy portion. Ah, a little bit dangerous there. Throwing caution to the wind as Chan rides his bike in. Daniel Hershey coming in hot. There's smooth transition. So Daniel Hershey from Asia on the tails on the trail of uh, Matt Chan. Again, these athletes, it's much different than last year's beach event. It's a rocky, rocky beach. You can see. Oh, one athlete goes down. Not guys, sure we have guys, a name on guys, that athlete. We just had our first wipe out. But again, very, very unforgiving terrain. There go Numi and Chad still hanging tough. New Numi that was a swimmer, but he's still looking strong at this portion. It's gonna be on and off the bike. These guys showing us how it's done. Ruth Anderson Harrell, the Kiwi, looking strong, leading the females at this portion. Again, she's a triathlete, but I don't think you can really draw a parallel to triathlons. This is not flat ground. It's unforgiving. It's a beach swim. The male athletes now padding away on those up and down hills that we knew would be coming. So this event only announced on Monday night. These athletes didn't know it was coming. They didn't know they were competing on Wednesday. Hey guys, There's Julie you... Fouché. Not looking happy, but looking strong. And a beautiful aerial shot of the course where Numi and Chad maintain the one-two positions. Back to the bike transition. It's like Angie Pie. Angie Pie looking strong at this point in the competition. She's being chased by Sakamoto, so Angie Pie has overtaken Annie Sakamoto. Annie was the first female out of the water, and now it looks like she's moved to fourth place. Numi now on the road, on the flat ground. Remember, this is eight kilometers, this long, flat portion, about three miles worth of that, where they can make up some ground. Ruth Anderson Harrell looking comfortable. Remember, these are single speed bikes, so she's probably used to something with a few more gears. There's champion, last year's JC champ, Rich Froning, now looking to be in good spirits, and he's huffing it. Fouché, no surprise, uh, passing the male athletes. We're used to seeing her do that. And now we have a gang of athletes on the course. Could turn into a full contact bike ride. Billy! Scott Panchik there couldn't make his mind if he wanted to be on the bike or off the bike, chose to push it instead. And he's followed closely behind by Angie Pai, Annie Sakamoto. Tight race for the females. Second, third, fourth place. Deb Cordner, this is a success story. Last year, her CrossFit games were ended by a swim, and here she is coming out of the ocean. That is touching. There's uh, Nicole Carroll, CrossFit original, directing traffic. Matt Chan now chasing down the leaders, getting aerodynamic. Looks to know what he's doing. I know he's had some time on a bike recently to practice. But they just cannot close the gap on Numi yet. Remember, the swim and the bike combined is one scored event. It's worth 100 points. Those are hugely valuable points. There's 350 points total up for grabs on the day. The swim and bike will be one portion of that, Robert, when these guys ditch their now. bikes, they'll run up to the transition zone, oh. and then there'll be a second portion worth 100 points as well. There's 2010 champ Kristen Clever, Here's now made it to the transition. Team. South Central athlete Asia Barto, one of our larger athletes, making it now Jilu. on to the bike. And a little bit, little bit of time to sing. Asia known for a good attitude. He's going to need it here on this uh, long, long event. Numi's cruising in here. He's come up to the point where he's going to ditch his bike. There's only about 150 meters to go for that first scored event. And Numi's hoofing. He's passing up the water. He wants those 100 points. Chad McKay hot on his heels. He's taking a little bit more time. He'll still, worst case scenario, he's got a strong lead over third place. Worst case scenario, he's going to pick up 95 points gonna suck down a goo packet or something it looks like get some energy but he's going uh, surpassing that water as well so Numi 
Chad, it's hard to believe that they would not finish in 1-2. In fact, it's going to be impossible. Numi's going to take first in Event 1. He's going to pick up 100 points. Looks like McKay will take 95. Here's Chan, Matt Chan, coming in third, the fourth place finisher from 2010. Looking strong. Remember last year, Matt won the swim portion of the beach event, but he lost ground on the run. He's, uh, he's taking no prisoners at this point. He's charging up the hill. And there is your current female leader, Ruth Anderson Burrell. Daniel Hershey representing Asia, chasing down Chan. Don't think he'll be able to close that gap. And here's a look at what these athletes are going to be treated to in the next portion of this event. Over 11 kilometers of up and down hill climbs. I want to call it a run, but let's be honest, on this kind of terrain, it's going to be an aggressive hike. On the downhills, we're going to see some running, but even the downhills, just as treacherous, really, as the uphills. Ruth Anderson Harrell officially will be the first female to ditch her bike, but she's got some athletes on her tail. She's going to have to hustle. Meanwhile, athletes still coming out of the water. Now, there's not very much perspective when you're on the beach. They really don't know where they are in relation to one another, but uh, the athletes who are still on the beach know that they're probably not doing that well. Miko Rompa from Europe on the heels of Harrell. Now, Amy Sakamoto with Julie Fouché neck and neck. They're going to sprint it out for these points. Now remember, this is worth 100 points, so every little second counts. They're really going to come down to a race here. However, if you burn yourself out and then you have an 11K hill run in front of you, you're going to kick your ass before, uh, before you even start event number two. Now, this is uh, dry, unforgiving terrain, as we already mentioned, but if you guys have not been to Southern California, this is, this is desert. It's literally you sneeze, you can start a fire in this kind of environment. These guys are doing their best to stay hydrated, but it's going to be a brutal 11K in front of them. Julie Fouché just in front of Swan there, the Australian athlete. Amy Sakamoto on her heels. And there's Christy Phillips looking strong at this portion of the event. Christy Phillips repping the, the uh, Mid-Atlantic. Numi Sne, here are your current male leaders looking very strong at this portion, but everybody has been reduced really to, like we mentioned, an, an aggressive hike. 2010 champ, Kristen Clever. Not where we would expect her to be at this point in the competition. She's sitting pretty far back. She finished the bike transition in the bottom third of the competition, so we'll see if she can make up any ground on the run. Chris Spieler has overtaken Matt Chan. Reports from the course are that he's taking the most aggressive pace at the run. So he's closing the gap on some of these other athletes. Numi looks untouchable. Really, I'm having deja vu from 2009 when Miko Salo, a dark horse from Europe, came on the scene and destroyed the seven-kilometer hill run, opened up everybody's eyes and made them pay attention. And Numi, never heard of him before. Of course, he uh, did well in his regional competition, but he is making a statement with his performance right now as these athletes rounding the bend coming up over the summit quite a view I can't imagine that they're taking it in fun for a spectator but here goes Mackie just probably about 45 minutes into this run overtaking Numi so now Chad McKay is your current male leader and the overall leader of the event Chris Spieler it looked like he had a couple of troubles even when they entered to the water Chris on paper, this is his event. Every single long distance event in the CrossFit Games have belonged to Chris. All right. But seeing a Chris Beale I've never seen before. Kyle Kasperbauer out of the North Central. He was a 2009 Games competitor, went team for a few years, made a statement again this year at his reach, which is crushing the competition. And he's looking extremely strong at this point. Sitting in third place. No, All the athletes no, coming up on the oh, summit, sorry. and there is your female leader, Ruth Anderson Harrell. True story, Ruth is a sheep farmer. She's also a games competitor. She's been around for a while, and again, that triathlon and distant experience is uh, really playing to her strengths. These guys now at the summit of Microwave Mountain. You can see the antenna up there on the, on the far side of the hill marks the true summit. These guys are now going to start their descent down towards the finish line, the obstacle course. It's up and down along this dirt rutted trail. They'll come to a final 1,000 meter sprint. There's Chris Spieler 
but on the downhill, this downhill is surprisingly brutal. If you've not done a downhill portion, it takes just as much exertion as it does to do uh, uphill, if not more. Plus, uh, the terrain, dangerous. It's, it's uh, loose rocks and gravel. And here's McKay and Numi, hooked to be in lockstep. Again, similar to 2009, when uh, Miko Salo and Chris Spieler had a conversation on the trail. It almost looks like they're running partners. Here goes Kyle Kasperbauer attacking the downhills, closing the gap on first and second place. Kasperbauer is known to be a strong kid in 2009, and here he is just crushing a distance event. He's closing in there on Chris Spieler. Spieler reports from the field. We've got audible, audible cries from Spieler. He's having a lot of trouble. His legs locking up. He's having lots of cramps. Look, he's even trying to impart a, a backwards run downhill. Spieler, it's literally a Spieler that I have never seen before. He is, uh, looks to be suffering quite a bit. Don't know if it's dehydration. Don't know if it's just the exertion of this event. But uh, Chris Spieler lo looks to be in trouble for what we would have expected from him. Casper Bauer looking strong, and he will overtake now Chris Spieler. Chris Spieler literally at the summit had stopped to stretch out his legs and get some water, and Casper Bauer's taking no prisoners. He just looks strong on this downhill. Look at him sidestepping, traversing on the way down. This is 50 degrees probably of, of deep, steep downhill. Your leaders, McKay from Australia, Numi Snake-Ketterinarsson from Iceland. Again, he's living in Sweden, representing Europe. Now these are just undulating hills, it's brutal, it's up and it's down. Every time you get to a summit, it's just a false summit. You've got another one in front of you. So different from Aromas in, in past years where these athletes knew the start line, they knew the finish line. These guys have absolutely no idea where they're going. They've never seen this terrain before. So it's gotta be punishing to get to the top of a hill just to see another one right in front of you. Look at that perspective. If you wanna see how far these athletes have to go, they're looking like ants on the top of Microwave Mountain as they're making their way down towards that finish line. Ruth Anderson Harrell still charging forward. She is uh, running at any opportunity that she has and uh, closing in on some of the male competitors. Numi showed a couple of signs of weakness here on the backside asking for water, asking how far he had to go, uh, made some statements to McKay. McKay, though, just looking stalwart. Now, this is a 220-pound athlete who is currently in the lead for our distance event. There's Rich Froning, last year's champion, passing out a high five. Looks to be in good spirits. As the overall leaders, male leaders, take the downhill portion. And again, McKay just looking strong. Now we are approaching the final thousand meters. McKay looks over his shoulder, sees where he's got to go. And he is continuing to charge just on a trot. Doesn't feel like he's in any danger from Numi. Now, these guys have flip-flopped from event number one. Numi took first, took 100 points. McKay took second, got 95 points. Now that'll flip-flop. McKay will take 100 points. Numi will take 95. They've got it in the bag, so not a bad way to start your 2012 Reebok CrossFit game. 195 points in the first two events. Again, highlighting the international nature of the CrossFit Games. We've got an Australian across the finish line first, followed by an athlete representing Europe, a, a native of Iceland. And here comes Numi now, looking over his shoulder, but really there's no one in sight down the rest of that trail. Here we will finish at Camp Pendleton U.S. Marine Corps Obstacle Course. We uh, got to give a shout out to Camp Pendleton. These guys were very, very gracious hosts. The military community, very large part of the CrossFit community, and uh, we are very, uh, we have a lot of gratitude for them hosting us. Numi, go ahead and lay down on the ground, assume the CrossFit recovery position. And Kyle Kasperbauer in 2056 looks like he will come across the finish line in third place. So Kyle Kasperbauer again, used to be a strong kid. Now we've got him coming across in third place in the longest event in CrossFit Games history. But there, ladies and gentlemen, in exact same fashion to last year, Julie Fouché beats not only all the women, but all but eight men in this competition. Julie Fouché, and a race to the finish, Ruth Anderson, Harrell, and Christy Phillips separated by no more than a second, and just the look of pain in Christy Phillips' eyes as she comes across. These athletes are literally stepping across the finish line, taking two steps at most, and collapsing on the ground. Marcus Hendren across the finish line with his new training partner, 2010 champ, Graham Holmberg. 
Chris Spieler. We wondered where he was on the course. He lost a lot of ground, and Chris Spieler now crossing the finish line. We heard that he was suffering on the course, and the crowd cheers him across, but Chris lost an enormous amount of ground on this event. The official results for women's event one. Ruth Anderson Harrell takes first in 100 points with 48-14. Fouché just behind in 49-18. And Annie Sakamoto rounds out third place with a score of 42-20. In event two for the females, Julie Fouché takes the lead with a time of two hours and five minutes. Christy Phillips was one second ahead of Ruth Anderson Harrell to take second place. The official results for the men's competition for Pendleton number one. Numi Snake Cutter and Arson finishes in first with a time of 42.13. McKay from Australia was behind him in 43.04, and Matt Chan from CrossFit Verve in Denver rounds out number three with 43.58. On Pendleton two, our leaders flip flop. Chad McKay takes first in an hour and 57 minutes. Numi Snake Cutter and Arson two minutes behind him for second place. Kyle Kasperbauer of the North Central finishes in third in two hours, one minute. 